Okay, it's recording. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as I did in the introduction last time, I said I'm going to be coming and talking about the stories of the prophets, inshallah, right? But I had another thought that I'm going to add to that a couple of things and we're going to change the sessions a little bit every once in a while. But for today's session, it's basically a conversation and we're going to pick a story from the Quran and we're going to go over it and have a discussion about it. Everybody with me? Anybody that wants to sleep, I'll have them do push-ups or stand up. I'm going to figure out a way to make them stay awake. Got a deal? Anybody standing in the background talking to each other, are going to get in trouble. So, with that said, with that introduction, with that introduction, let's go ahead and start and start a lot of that. First off, first off, I'm going to ask a number of you to respond to me with a simple question. How did you come here today? Yeah. By car. By car. So tell me the steps of, of getting into the car. How did you come here? We opened the car door and we sat in the car and we drove here. And you drove here. Okay. How did you come here today? By car. By car also. But before the car, what did you do? You you washed up, you dressed up, you did something, right? No, you didn't. You just come straight from school here. That could be the case. You came straight from school to here, right? So. You did some steps to get to here, right? So I'll ask you another question. Did any of you just happen to magically appear here? You did? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's your question? No, I was just saying no. No, okay. <laughs> so none of us magically appeared here. We all took steps to get here. We all took steps to come here, correct? None of us magically appeared. None of us just out of the blue first found themselves here. So what does that tell you? That you came by transportation. Transportation, good. What else? What else? What is that like? That's a good point. You, you, in order for you to do anything, you have to take certain steps, right? You can't magically appear somewhere, you can't magically do something. You have to take certain steps to get to a place. Regardless of where that place is. So, and I'm going to try now to, let's talk about the story of the Quran that we're going to be talking about today. The story is of Al Amran, and it's from the Surah of Al Amran. It's the second Surah, or the third Surah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem. إن الله اصطفى آدم ونوحا وآل عمران وآل إبراهيم وآل عمران على العالم. So this is ayah 33. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah has chosen Adam, Nuh, and Al Ibrahim, the family of Ibrahim, and Al Imran, the family of Imran. على العالم. So Allah has chosen them. Okay? We're going to find out later why He chose them. So, just a little bit of background about Al Imran. Al Imran, the surah was is, was was revealed when, at the time of, of the Prophet Sallallahu when the Christians were coming, Masala uh, Najran were coming into the Prophet Sallallahu to have these conversations. So, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala revealed the surah as a, a way of communicating with them. Because why? Who's Al Imran? Does anybody know who Al Imran? Is? Okay, so, yes? Great, 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 great parents of Sayyidina Isa and Mecca. So they have, they're, they're a, a pivotal family in the Christian religion. Correct? So that's a way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the Prophet sallallahu a common ground to have a conversation with them. You have something to share, something to talk about. And there are a couple of things that I'm going to mention here and I'm going to take quiz you at the end. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
gave him this surah, so he had a conversation and a dialogue with him. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose Adam and Noah. But when he says this, I chose Adam and Noah, and then he said, Al Ibrahim and Al Imran. What's the difference? Can anybody tell me the difference? By selecting individuals? Yes. Individual prophets and then the two families. Two families. What does that tell you? What does that tell you? You don't know? Anybody? Anybody? Nobody. That tells you that subhanAllah, even the prophets have issues with their families. But at the same time, there are families that even though they were not prophets, but from them came prophets. There are families when they have the right dedication and the right goal in their life, they become chosen. Sayyidina Ibrahim was known as what? Abu al right? Because the prophets came from his generation. And he made specific dua for his generation. So that's Sayyidina Ibrahim. And al Amran, we know Jesus beat me upon him. So, now, to put things into context and understand a little bit more, and we're going to get more into the surah, to put things into context. During the time of uh, Al Imran, Imran and his wife, they, the, the, anybody that believed in God at that time was being prosecuted or being tortured by the Romans. You know about the Colosseum? Does anybody know what a Colosseum is? You know that they used to, anybody that believes anything other than, than the gods of the Romans, they would get thrown for the lions and they would get punished for their belief. And anybody knows that most of the time, any of the prophets that come out, they are tortured first by their people until they spread the message. So during that time, this was happening to the people that believed in Allah. Until this woman decided to do something about it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, If qalat imra'atu imra'at, the wife of Imran said, you know what? Oh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give to you whatever I have in my, my belly. The, the child that I'm going to have, he's going to be dedicated for you. Now, the question, why would she say something like this? The reason why she's saying this, she wants a new generation. She's seeing everybody being prosecuted. But she wants to protect what? Faith and Muslims. She wants to protect Jerusalem. So what did she think about? About you. About the new generation. She needs you. She needs the new generation to come up and step up to the plate. She has one daughter. She's the wife of Zakaria. But she said, no, I need another child. So she said what? When you say, oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, she made dua. Oh Allah, I want a child. And in her head, she wanted a boy. And we'll find out why she wanted a boy. And that's not something against girls, but I'll explain why. So she said, Oh Allah, whatever I'm going to have is going to be yours. Yours means it's going to be dedicated for you and it's going to do anything that, that is related to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says that in the following surah, فَلَمَّا وَضَعَتْهَا قَالَتْ رَبِّ إِنِّي وَضَعْتُهَا أُنْفَ She said, Oh Allah, I just had a girl. Wallahu a'lam bima wada'at. And Allah, of course, knows who, what she had. He knows it's a girl. Wallahu a'lam bima wada'at. Wa laysa dhakaruka al-untha. And the boy is not like a girl. There's a difference between a boy and a girl. And I'll explain why the difference is. Wa inni samaytuha maryam. And I'll explain that in the next one. So she said, I have a girl. Oh Allah, I, I've begotten a girl. And her, in her mind, she wanted what? She wanted someone to carry the message, and she wanted a man, she wanted a boy to carry the message. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did what? Reversed it. And she got a girl. But you know what? She was so dedicated, and she had a goal in her life that she wanted to protect the deen. And she said, I'm going to call her Maryam. She's a girl. And does anybody know what Maryam is? What does the name Maryam mean? There's different meanings for it, but what is one of the meanings of money? Worshipper or the servant of worship. And they have other meanings actually in the, in the, in the dictionary for it. 
So her goal was to have what? Have a child that's going to protect the Bayt uh, al-Maqdis and, and, and Al-Aqsa and their religion. And at the same time, she wanted to make sure that the message continues. And I want you to protect her and protect the, her generations. So now she had a girl, and, and we'll stop at that point. That she had a girl. Her, she made dua and she had a girl. The girl later on, she had who? Who did Maryam have afterwards? Yes? Sayyidina Isa. Sayyidina Isa. And what did Sayyidina Isa do? What did he do? Anybody? Yeah? He introduced Christianity. He brought people back to believe in them, not Christianity. But he brought people back to believe in, in the oneness of God. The original message that she had. It didn't come from Maryam. It waited a little bit. And there's a reason why things wait. Sometimes you want to do certain things, but you're not ready for it. There's a similar surah to it, Qusat uh, Uzayj, in the Quran. Allah put him in, he slept for a hundred years, because it was not his time. And he was resurrected after a hundred years, and he gave the message, because that it was his time. It was not time for Isa to come, but it was time for Maryam. Now, with the goal of the grandmother, and the goal of the family, they had to take steps, right? What were a couple of the steps that you talked about? What did she do? Allah says in the Quran, in the Surah, what did I mention, the first couple of things that I mentioned? What did she say? Anybody? What did Umrah do? Yeah. Oh, she wanted to um, end the torture, and she wanted the next generation to be So she had a goal in her mind, I want to end what's going on, and I want to do something about it. I'm not going to let go. What can I do about it? I need who? I'm too old to do anything. I need a new generation. I need you. But not just that. I'm going to make dua too. I have to make dua. And I dedicated this child for you. Her answer was not immediate, because it took time before Isa came. But the answer came to Maryam, right? She came. What did Maryam do? She was known that she would help the needy, she would take care of people, she was very, very subhanAllah. Maryam is one of the, the well-known females in the entire human race history, right? And nobody could say anything bad about her. Would you agree? That's the child of that lady. Because she had a goal in mind. She wanted to make sure that the message continued. She wanted to make sure that it goes through. So that's what she did. She made dua. And after she got the girl, what did she do? She said, okay, I got a girl, I'm done. My dua is not accepted. I said, I'm not going to do anything. Is that what she did? What did Allah say in the Quran? What did you say after that? And I called her money. Now, did you notice one important aspect here? She has a dialogue with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just like you have a dialogue with your friend. First, she makes dua. Then, she talks to Allah about things. How many of you talk to Allah about things? Zero. I don't think any of us talk to Allah about things. Do we? Yeah. It's kind of hard to talk to someone. We won't give you a direct response immediately. Understood. Understood. But the response, from the simple example that we had today, if you don't get the response immediately, do you have to get the response immediately for this? You know what that's called? That's called instant gratification. You have to have things right now. I want to have things right now, on my terms. Now, subhanAllah, life is not on our terms. Life is not on our terms. When you get married, do you have a baby immediately? It takes nine months. At least. When the baby is term, you know, you guys are not young here, you already know this. It takes nine months. Everything has time. Anything has time. It does, it's not an immediate response. It took more than a generation for Sayyidina Isa to come, for her dua to be responded. Right? What did Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi do? Remember when he used to go to, go to Ghaha? What did he do? He would just sit there and talk. Sayyidina Ibrahim, 
He would do the same thing. She's doing the ibadah of the anbiya, talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's a type of worship that we don't do. Talking to Allah, having a conversation with Allah. I understand your question that I need, an, I need a response right now. Make dua. You never know. SubhanAllah, you'll notice that sometimes you get things in different times, and you'll notice you get things instantly. Why? Because things are meant to happen in a certain way. When it's time for something to happen, it'll happen. If I throw a seed in the, and I know it's gonna grow. If I throw a seed in the, in the, in the uh, uh, dirt, is it gonna grow immediately? It has to, I want it right now. Come on. It's not, it's not gonna come up. It has to take time. But at the same time, if I don't put the proper water, if I don't give it enough sun, if I don't do the steps needed for it to come out, is it going to come out? No. The steps that we talked about. You, you went in the car, you opened the door, you got in, and drove here. There's two things here. You had a target where you were going, right? And you took specific, specific steps to come here. So in order for you to get anywhere in life, you have to have a target. You have to have a goal in front of you. What do you want to do? What's your goal in life? Anybody. Anybody has a goal in life. What's your goal in life? Yes, I say. To be successful. To be successful. Define successful. <coughs> um, um, let you um, reach happiness and your... Um, this is a grandiose image. No, no. I want you to define it. Successful player, soccer player, successful um, physician, successful architect, successful engineer, successful uh, what? Success, successful could go in. Yeah. Wealthy. Wealthy. What does wealthy mean? Rich. Rich. What does rich mean? Have money? Is money enough? What if you have money and you're paralyzed and you can't walk? When you buy a new leg. Are you going to buy a new leg? You buy a new leg after you buy a new leg. Can you run with a new leg? No. So is, the, is, is wealth and money the, the, the end of it all? It's not. What, you have to have an actual goal in life. And when you have a goal in life, you have to get to that. Yes? You can start with small things like success in school. You can start with small things. Now, the small thing that you're talking about is the steps to get to something. You have to have a goal. There has to be a goal. You have to go somewhere. You have to decide to come to here to ACC, right? You would get in the car and just go nowhere. What are you going to do? You're going to run out of gas and get in the big, be stranded in the middle of the street. True or not? What are you going to do? Just drive the car and just go nowhere? It's not going to happen. You're not going to get anywhere. You have to have a specific goal in life. Now, we'll talk a little bit about what she did, and then we'll, I'll ask you guys. Now, the next part of this conversation, I'm not talking. I'm just leading you, and you've got to talk. So, from the story, what's the first thing she did? She made what? Dua. Dua. Do not underestimate the power of dua. The first thing, you make dua for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with anything, whatever you want, even if it's a car. Anything you want, you make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's step one. Step two, she took steps. And she had the goal determined. Even when she got a girl, she decided, I'm going to do something about it. And I'm going to call her Mary because my goal is still the same. And I'm sure she raised her the way she wanted her to be. Correct? So you have to have steps and you have to make sure and make, make the eye. And then the last thing that she's done, oh, and I'm sure she's done it over and over and over and over again. She talked to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She had a conversation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So she's making dua and having a conversation. Talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you have problems at school, talk to Allah. If you have problems with your friends, talk to Allah. Sometimes there are certain things that you can't tell friends. Or you can't tell your parents. Or you can't tell anyone. You can tell Allah. When you were little, I'm sure you had an imaginary friend. Right? You guys, if you're talking to me, you don't have an imaginary friend? <laughs> Some people do have imaginary friends. Until now, you can stay here, right? So, 
Some people do have imaginary friends. Take that imaginary friend and use Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and have a dialogue and a conversation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now the next step, practical application. Because anything that we talk about, we have to have a practical application for it. And I'm going to go around and ask you. And you have to ask me and respond to me quickly. Right? What's your goal in life? Don't look down, by the way. I'm going to ask each one. Safe. No talking. Don't, don't look down. I'm going to point at you each one and you're going to tell me, I go in life is so. I go in life is so. So now by the time I get to you, you have a goal in life. So what's your goal in life? That, that's not an answer. Because successful is a broad. I want to be X. What? An engineer. An engineer. Perfect. Next. To travel. To travel. Where? Everywhere. To travel everywhere? What are you going to do in travel? What are you learning from travel? Traveling is not a goal in life because you, can, you have to be doing what traveling doing what traveling doing uh, um, aid work traveling giving lectures huh? aid work so aid work sure I like that what what's your goal in life uh, be happy be happy no that's not still <laughs> I need a, a, a concrete goal in life I need to be X be a doctor be a doctor to be a good Muslim be a good Muslim okay. Be a doctor? Okay. Have a good job. You have a good job. Define a good job. What's a good job? So you get money. Like. Not, not get money. What is a good job? Uh, a doctor. A doctor? Okay. Next. Engineer. Engineer, huh? Doctor. Dentist. Engineer. No. Our teacher. Physical therapy. Physical therapy. Doctor. 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 Uh, 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 um, graduate high school. Graduate high school. <laughs> that's, remember, that's, that's the steps. That's the steps you get to it. That's the steps you get to it. So, what's your what's your ultimate goal? Um, get a PhD. Get a PhD in what? I don't know. You don't know? No. Just to get a PhD. Okay. You? No, yes, you. Doctor? Okay. Surgeon. 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 Surgeon? Engineer. Engineer. What do you want to be? <laughs> Quitting my job. That's a, that's a goal in life. <laughs> Doctor. To me what? To me one direction? Uh, by the way, by the way, it's not so light to comment on someone's not polite. Go ahead. That's it? That's your goal in life? Okay. So you're not going to talk about this a little more. What's your goal? Doctor. I have a good family. I like that one. All the other ones? I like that one. No. Huh? What do you want to be? Hey, what's your goal in life? It could be a job. It could be anything. You want a car? That, that's something near. That's not an ultimate goal. When you got a car, what are you going to do? Drive. <laughs> After you drive, where are you going to go? <laughs> to the mansion? Yeah. That's good. <laughs> but really, what do you want to be? What do you want to be? <laughs> guys, guys, no side talk. Guys, no side talk. Respect, please. All I need is a servant under God. Servant under God. I love these kind of responses. Political responses. Go ahead. Engineer. I want to provide for my Muslim community. Provide for my Muslim community. That's good. Huh? Engineer. Please. You. To please Allah. How do you want to please Allah? To make him happy. How are you going to make him happy? How do you make him happy? Like what? What are you gonna do, big man? Guys, no side talk. Uh, great. Well, pleasing Allah is something we have to do regardless. Now, can anybody tell me what's the common theme here? A job. Pretty much. Pretty much a job. Money. Being rich. Money. None of you. None of you, with the exception of one, had a thought, actually two, had a thought about not just myself, 
about others. You think about others. You change your goal in life. You have a goal, and you go into it. When you having an individual goal is is a is a great beacon for yourself because you need to go somewhere, right? You, you have to go there. I have. I, you came here again. I keep using that example. I I, I, I want to use my example, but I did when I was younger. But sometimes I don't feel very comfortable. But I can use that as an example. When I was, I would say between. <coughs> Less than 10 years old, I knew what I wanted to be. Unfortunately, I wanted to be an architect. And by the way, I am an architect. I knew that when I was 10. Now, I didn't think of it. I knew it. This is what I'm going. This is where I'm going. And this is the path I'm going. Regardless of what happens in front of me. I can train. Through middle school, that's what I'm doing. I took art classes. I was good in drawings. It happened to be that everybody else in my family was architects, so I guess that, that helped with it. But that was my goal in life. And when I got closer to it, I realized that, you know what, no, no, not just an architect. I want to do my master's and my PhD. That was when I was in high school. When I came to get into college, I had two choices. One college that I was going to get into that my dad knows everybody and their mother, and if I go there, I'll get straight A's without even going to class. And the other one was going to beat me up. And uh, as everybody was saying, you'll fail. You're never going to pass. Everybody that graduated like me from, from where I graduated, they don't pass from the first year when you go to this college. And they said, you're not going to pass. There's no way. No way. This percentage is very slim. And what would you do in that point? That everybody you know is telling you you're not going to pass. But I knew one thing. But I knew one thing. This is my goal. I have two colleges, by the way, well, I'm going to graduate an architect from both colleges. But one is much harder than the other. And I knew when I graduate from this, I'm going to be a better architect. And my dad, even he submitted my paperwork to the other one. I went in, pulled it out. Submit it to the harder columns. I went in, alhamdulillah, I passed and I went through. I, my goal was to do my master's. I planned it, it was all set. Once I got to that, got my master's, I was planning on to do my PhD, but there was no funding in college and I had to let it go when I came here. But I realized something. I got married, alhamdulillah, and that was also one of the mini goals. But the thing is, Throughout the whole process, I'm taking steps towards it. When I got to college and I finished it, I reached my goal. What do I do? I'm done. I want to be an architect. I am an architect. I stopped. I graduated in 98 and I didn't do anything. I did my master's. After I finished my master's, I finished in 2001, 2002. I did nothing. I had a job, alhamdulillah, I mean, I had a family, I had kids. But I didn't do anything for my goal. I went into the motion of getting into a job, going day in, day out, doing my work. That's what you guys are thinking of, by the way. I want a job. I want a job that pays me money. That's not it. That's not it. When I got there, it took me a number of years. I'm like, what am I, what am I doing here? I'm doing this every single day. By the way, once you graduate and I have a job, you do the same thing every single day. You're not going to take summer breaks and breaks. It's the same thing over and over and over. So I realized I'm, I'm, I'm in the motion, didn't even think about it. I was supposed to, and in any, most of the professions, you have a license you can work for. I had the fear of taking a license. I can't take it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fail. There's no way I can pass. Everybody was telling me you're going you're gonna to fail. There's no way you're going to pass. It's kind of law. I had Adam and the tests, we had nine tests for our license, and everybody would say that you would take approximately a year. You study three weeks and take a test, and then three weeks and take a test. By nine months, you're done with your exam, and that way you get your license, right? I had a goal in my head. I'm going to get this done in the shortest time possible. But I had a goal, and the goal was set in the last week of July. Within three months, I took a license and took all nine tests. 
I take it, I was talking to, to some of the, the guys that was working with me. I would study one week and take the test, one week and take the test, one week and take the test. Which people would take a month or even more to study. I would study just one week. Because I, I was determined to do it. After I did that, I passed it in three months, woo, I got my license. Sat there doing nothing. I have no goal. I'm just coasting, going to work, coming back, going to work, going back. Until recently. I've been doing it for the past couple of years. One thing when I was younger, I just forgot to mention, I always had a five-year plan. I've always had it since I was in middle school. What's my five-year plan? What am I going to do? I've had a five-year plan. What are the steps? How am I going to get there? When I got it was this past, I would say, couple of years, I didn't have a straight aim. I have nothing to shoot for. Alhamdulillah, I have a beautiful family. I have a good job. I'm an architect. What else do I want? I realized I'm missing something. I got the goal that I wanted, but I'm still missing something. And money is not one of them. It doesn't matter. You could have a lot of money, but you could be miserable at everything else. Money is not one. You know what it is? What's the goal? I started doing it every once in a while. I would give Quran classes to kids. I would give stuff like that to kids. I realized that I have to have a purpose in life. I have to, there has to be a reason why I'm here. What am I doing? When I started shifting things, and shifting, instead of being, I just have a job and that's what I'm doing, I have another goal. My goal is you. My goal is helping others. It doesn't matter who it is. Helping others. Doing this. You know why I'm doing this today? Why? Can anybody give me an answer? Just one. Hmm? Why? To help us like, get better in life. And Not just you. Yeah. To please Allah. To please Allah. Uh, the, the, I kept saying from, from where I'm leaving, that's the only thing I'm saying. I want to, this is for Allah's promise. But help others. To show others. Yes. Help the next generation. You are the next generation. You are the next generation. It's not just helping you, helping anybody else that might benefit from this. You know what it is? When I die, this becomes the ilmun yuntafa'i. It's something that someone might take. If you guys heard one thing from what I said today, and inshallah you will, one thing, it will stay in my hasanat. One thing. And that's my new goal in life. Simple as that. Now, when you, what you have is perfect. Having a goal, you want to be something. Now, I'll ask you another thing. You do have, you want to be a doctor, you want to be, you want to travel, you want to be a physician, you want to be a surgeon, you want to have a good family, you want to help your community, right? All that you want a car, I'll talk to your mom about it. You want all these things, right? How are you going to get there? How are you going to get there? Not poof, magic. It's not going to happen. We already established that. You're not going to come here out of nowhere. You have to take certain steps. Now the question still plays with you. Are you taking the certain steps for you to go where you want to go? Is your daily habits that you're doing taking you there? Is the way you're doing your homework taking you there? Is the way you're dealing with others, you want to aid people and help people? Are you helping the community? Are you helping others from now? You want to benefit your community and, and, and do everything to your community? Are you doing that now? You have to start small. It doesn't matter. You have to start. It's not a matter of, of I want to be, I want to help the community, but I'm sitting at home and I'm playing video games all the time. I want to be, I want to do, uh, do aid work, and I don't even know how to do CPR. Right? There have to be tasks and steps for you to do. So I'm just going to leave you with this. This is an assignment that you're going to do. We got a deal? Say aye. Aye. Right. I didn't hear. Aye. Right. Right. So we have an assignment that you're not going to turn into me. It's going to be your assignment. And you're going to leave it at home. I'm not going to ask you about it. It's between you and yourself. You need to go home and think about what your goal in life is going to be. Once you figure out what your goal in life is going to be, discuss it with others. What do you think of this? This is what I'm thinking. This is what I want to do. 
once you figure out your goal in life, write it down. And keep it in front of you. You know when you, it's called positive affirmation. I knew, I knew that I wanted to do something. You knew that you're coming here, right? If traffic goes left from somewhere, what are you going to do? You've got to take another route. So if you don't know where you're going, you'll never reach it. I think that's it. So your homework is to try to figure out what you want to do. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.